Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm your host, Amanda Lamb. In today's deep dive conversation with WREL reporter Scott Mason, also known as the Tar Heel Traveler, we're going to talk about a milestone for the franchise that has brought so much joy to so many people over the years. Scott, you have done 2,500 stories. That's amazing. Stories that make us laugh, that make us cry, that entertain us. Welcome to the program. Well, thanks. It's great to be here, and I always love talking about the Tar Heel Traveler. I know you do. And I just, first of all, how long have you been doing it? Because I don't even know. Yeah, the series debuted in September of 2007, so we're in our 16th year. Wow, that is amazing. Did you ever imagine when you first started this, if somebody had said, you're going to do 2,500 Tar Heel Travelers, would you have imagined that? Not at all. Uh, when we started, of course, the Tar Heel Traveler now airs four nights a week, Monday through Thursday. But when we started, we were actually on five nights a week. And when they came to me and said, hey, we want to launch this series, I was thinking, oh, my gosh, five stories a week, week after week, year after year. How am I going to be able to fill all those slots? Uh, so, I, no, I had no idea that you know, 16 years later, we would have 2,500 stories. But oh my gosh, now I have so many story ideas, just stories waiting to be told. And I mean, I guess probably a big part of that is the internet. I mean, people just reach out to you, right? They see your stories and they say, wow, I have something for him. How do you find your stories and you know, like you were just saying, I mean, do you just get so many you can't do them all? Well, I get that question a lot. How do I find my stories? How do I get all those ideas? I get most of them through email. It is not unusual for me to receive three, four, five, even six emails a day from people suggesting story ideas. And I'm very old school. I print out the emails, I highlight them, I title them at the top of the page, and then I put them in a in the appropriate folder. For example, if I, say, get a story idea from Pinehurst, I have a Moore County folder and I put it in that. So is it hard not to do repeats? Because, I mean, obviously you go all over the state, so there's lots of options, but do you get to a point where you're like, well, I've kind of done that story a bunch of times? Or do they all have something unique about them? No, there is always a new story. There's always a story that I have not yet told. We occasionally do uh, re-airings of stories if, for example, there is an update. Or if we're going on a long, long road trip, uh, we won't have time to edit. Well, we may include a, a, a story that has aired in the past with an update. But no, generally, all of our stories are fresh and new, and you know, there's always another story. Absolutely. It kind of goes back to, you know, the, one of the first rules of being a journalist is that everyone has a story, right? Exactly. And you can find them around every corner. How did you choose this story to mark the 2,500 uh, mark? Well, I, I didn't choose it. It really chose me. I actually keep a running tally of all the stories that we have shot and I was looking at the sheet just a, a week or two ago, and I knew we were coming up on that 2,500 benchmark. And it just so happened that the 200th anniversary of the Ocracoke Lighthouse is next week, and it just corresponded. I, I mean, I think we, we are shooting uh, one more story between now and then, which will be our 2,499th, and then the 2,500th is the 200th anniversary of the Ocracoke Lighthouse. And so I thought that was kind of appropriate, but it just happened that way. That's really cool. And I know that people will be looking forward to looking at that story. Well, we will be back after the break with more from WREL's Tar Hill Traveler about some of his most memorable stories. Welcome back to the WREL Deli Download. I'm talking with WREL's Scott Mason about his work on the Tar Hill Traveler series, 2,500 stories this week, an amazing milestone in 16 years Okay, so asking you what your favorite story is is probably like asking a parent who is your favorite child. So tell me about, instead of saying your most favorite stories, your most memorable stories. Well, they are, in a way, sort of like children, and I almost feel like I have 2,500 compartments in my head because I really do remember pretty much each and every story. 
However, I would say my most memorable story of all 2,500, and there have been many, many memorable ones, but probably the most memorable is, believe it or not, the very first Tar Heel Traveler story we ever shot. Wow. What was that? It was in August of 2007, the first one out of the gate. It was about a man named Marty from Chapel Hill, and he was born without any arms. And there's a whole – a lot of my stories have backstories that the viewer doesn't really ever get to hear, but – this had a pretty interesting backstory. I didn't have a phone number for Marty. I just knew in my gut that he would be an interesting story. Uh, I did know that he ate breakfast every morning at a place called Sutton's, which is on Franklin Street in Chapel Hill, has one of those old-fashioned soda fountain counters. Well, I called Sutton's to see if you know if, if I could track down Marty, and the man said, "Oh yeah, he would love to love to be interviewed. Why don't you come here tomorrow morning? Be here at seven thirty. Marty would love to see you." Well, it was kind of risky because normally I call the person in advance and set the whole thing up, but the man at Sutton sounded so confident, so we showed up the next morning. Well, in walks Marty, and he saw our camera, and his face fell. He didn't want anything to do with that camera. Well, Marty sat down and started having breakfast, of course, eating with his feet, drinking coffee with his feet, and holding a fork with his feet. Well, I sat down next to him because I'm a huge breakfast eater, and I ordered bacon and eggs, and I think that kind of surprised Marty. It was sort of a, a little— A bonding s- moment, Well, right? it was sort of a signal that I was going to take my time and listen to his story, and sure enough, he opened it opened up, and gosh, I, before long, I couldn't get him to stop talking. And uh, he got all excited, and then he said, come on, let's let's go. And uh, he goes across the street and hops in this big blue van, and I was in the passenger seat, and he's driving driving with his feet down Franklin Street, tooting the horn to folks that he knew. He stops, and uh, Marty was a landscaper, and so he begins chainsawing a tree with his feet and cutting grass with his feet. And is this all on camera? Oh, yeah. We had the whole thing on camera, and... Uh, you know, believe it or not, I he had such a great personality and was just so friendly. He was about in his mid-60s at the time. And believe it or not, I, I really kind of forgot that he didn't have any arms after a while. Because he was so capable. Because he was so capable and so outgoing and had some really important life lessons. So that really set the tone for you, for all that you've done. And I'm guessing that you've probably stayed in touch with some of these folks and maybe done some follow-ups with them. Oh, yes. I have stayed in touch with with several folks. In fact, you know, I almost create this bond with them. Um, I remember a story in the early days of the Tar Heel Traveler doing a story on the the legend of the devil's tramping ground. You know, deep in the woods of Chatham County is there is this supposedly perfect circle where nothing has grown within that circle for hundreds of years, not a blade of grass. And yet there's brush and everything surrounding the circle. And the theory is the devil uses that ground to tramp around. Well, I went to interview this historian uh, from Pittsburgh, and I had set up the interview. We pulled into his driveway, and he was mowing the lawn at the time, and he said, well, I don't want to do the interview after all. I want to finish cutting the grass. I got, I got work to do. So I had to really twist his arm to do the to do the interview. Anyway, we did the interview. He soon forgot all about the camera. He was a fantastic interviewee. He's a character. He was a character, and that's what you want all your interview subjects to do is to forget the camera is there. And just be themselves. Yeah, and he, he had some great, so many great memorable lines. Well, anyway... That little story sort of made him famous, and it really created this bond between us. Well, a few years ago, I ran into ran into this man uh, doing another story, and we hugged each other, gave each other a big bear hug. Uh, you know, not that we knew each other well, but we had this bond that, that bond was created that through yeah. that story. Yeah, I have stories like that as well, believe it or not, from news. And it really it does make an impact on you when somebody comes back and says, thank you so much, you know, for doing that story. It meant a lot to me. Well, on on the flip side, I can't tell you how many people I've interviewed who have since passed away 
which is very sad, and yet how grateful I am that I have their story preserved. Right, and created a legacy, you know, for their friends and family it to is. be able I, to go back. And that's the thing. I feel like the Tar Heel Traveler is so much more than just a piddly little news segment, you know, on the news each night that it, in a way it's kind of preserving something important to North Carolina, almost the fabric of the state. The culture and the history. It, it is. Absolutely. So 2,500, how many more do you have in you, Scott? <laughs> well, I... I have at least 5,000 story ideas in my file cabinet. I mean, I have at least 5,000 sheets of paper, and that's a conservative estimate. And it really might be closer to 10,000, and the story ideas keep rolling in. Uh, so I don't know. I, I love telling stories. I've always been a storyteller ever since I was a little kid. I love to write. Kind of always knew what I wanted to do, even as a little boy. Um, so I think for now, I'll keep doing it and telling those stories. Awesome. And when can people see your stories on TV? And I'm assuming they can also find them online on WRL.com. Yes, Monday through Thursday nights at 5.55. And then about an hour later, the stories are posted online at WRAL.com. And then I've got my own website, thetarheeltraveler.com, which talks about some of my favorite stories and about the Tar Heel Traveler books that I've written. Awesome. Thank you so much, Scott, for sharing this important milestone and just for sharing the stories of people here in North Carolina. I know it means a lot to the viewers and also a lot to the people that you do the stories on. And thank you for listening to the WREL Daily Download and making us part of your morning routine. If you like what you're hearing, please rate us on Apple Podcasts or on whatever podcast app you use. Another great way to get WREL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter It's a daily email waiting in your inbox every morning with triangle news events and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WRAL.com backslash newsletter.